Uh, welcome to our session about ontology-based digital marketplaces for industry commons. I am Ebrahim Nouruzi from Fraunhofer Institute of uh, Mechanical of Materials uh, at Germany. So today I am your uh, host for this session. So uh, this, to remind you, this session will uh, going to be uh, recorded and uh, uh, during the talk, uh, your microphones and camera are automatically de deactivated. If you have uh, questions, you can ask it in uh, Q&A tab uh, in the in uh, Miro, or you can raise your hand that the host will invite you to the stage and you can ask your question with your uh, microphone and your video. So please be uh, active in this session uh, in chat and Q&A uh, question and answer. So in Onto Commons, uh, we have a, a cooperation on infrastructures uh, and we're promoting the role of an uh, industry commons translator ensuring uh, properly ontologies data documentation and uh, definition of the profile and role of an ontologies uh, translator uh, and coach and establishing best practice and provide translator training resources and establishing a directly uh, the uh, directory of uh, industry commons translator in cooperation with NMVP uh, marketplaces. So in digital uh, marketplaces is a like online uh, web platform that facilitates uh, material science innovation. And there are currently uh, multiple marketplaces projects available. And uh, the issue is that uh, most of them have limited interaction between each other. And in Auto Commons, the aim is to uh, establish a cooperation with all of these uh, related stakeholders for data documentation and interoperability in industrial domains. So uh, the main objective uh, of this session is to know uh, more about previous experiences and gap in the ontology and taxonomy uh, uh, based uh, standardized uh, data documentation in marketplaces learning from experiences of a uh, WIMP marketplace, uh, well Galaxy Market 4.0 project regarding ontology-based marketplaces, and then discuss about uh, the application of the Onto Commons approach to support interoperability, and then uh, finally propose a practical way to have uh, this alignment and interoperability of uh, data among different marketplaces. So with that, uh, we'll go through the agenda. So first we have uh, the talk for Las Lohete about a European uh, Commission vision and recommendations, uh, and then about uh, experiences of each marketplaces project. Uh, so marketplace, uh, Daniela uh, Toti will present that, and then Silvia Chicheria uh, about uh, uh, the beam and then Cosmos Alexo uh, Polus and Vasilis Mar Maratos uh, for Market 4.0. And then uh, DOM 4.0 requirements by Bayon uh, Torel Lofal, and then Marketplace Interoperability demonstrated by Sylvia. So uh, uh, I will now uh, invite uh, Laszlo Hefe to the stage while uh, I am introducing him he can uh, like share his uh, screen and go on so laszlo holds a, a master a degree in computational engineering from university of Rostock and a phd uh, in aerospace engineering from uh, carnifield university after research uh, and uh, academic career at max Planck institute for demographic research and at and Carnival University, uh, he uh, pursued a career in R&D, holding roles in project management, ICT, mechanical design, uh, acoustics, space uh, radiation, knowledge management, and statistical data analysis. He's currently a policy officer uh, of the European Commission. So thank you, Laszlo. Uh, the uh, stage is yours. Okay, good afternoon. <clears throat> First question, can you hear me well? 
Um, if not, I could go to, to low, low definition or something. Um, no, I can't hear. Yeah, you. so, I, okay, very well. If not, then just let me know quickly, then I can maybe adapt. Um, yeah, I was um, asked to give this presentation. Uh, thank you very much for the project to invite me. I'm actually the, the PO, the project officer for Onto Commons. And this um, title was proposed, uh, the European Commission Vision and Recommendations. Well, I did not yet, uh, I did not change this title, and I am not so sure if I can really um, deliver what you expect, but um, I can talk to you about um, this project and uh, related projects. And um, yeah, so my presentation has three parts. First, I talk about Hadia. This is a new executive agency. Then some words about um, a vision and recommendations. And finally, I will talk about some related projects. Hadia um, exists since the 1st April 2021, so roughly half a year. And this is the European Health and Digital Executive Agency. Um, this is the uh, homepage, and here's the web links to, to, to this uh, agency. Um, Hadia implements a couple of uh, new um, uh, programs for the new work, um, uh, work program. Um, there's a health, a very, very strong health part and a very strong digital part, but also from Horizon Europe um, in um, Pillar 2, Cluster 4, the part on digital industry and space cluster. So, yeah, why Hadia, why Health and Digital together? Well, there is the, well, I was told at least that this comes back to Ursula van der Leyen because she wanted a Health and Digital close together. And industry is part of cluster four, so they put us all together there. All together, we implement roughly 20 billion euros, which is quite a lot, and we are still quite new. So there are still kind of organizational things which need to improve, but I think we are on a good way. Yeah, so this is an um, uh, organigram of Hadea. This is not the latest version, but um, what I want to show you is that Hadea is an interesting mix of DGs. The lead DG is DG Sante, but there's also Connect, RTD, Grown, Defis, and some stuff comes from other executive agencies. Um, Sante is mainly in charge of Department A, so for health and food. Department B, where our projects are located, are in Department B, which is led by DG Connect. I'm in Unit B3. Industry, which is led by DG Grow. And finally, um, uh, two thirds of this unit comes from DG RTD. So I'm in, I'm in sector B3. I could talk much more about this, but maybe we use the time in the questions, if, if you have questions about this. So, yeah, yet yeah, now very brief uh, commission vision policy related calls. Um, the new commission, which now is already two years um, yeah, in charge, uh, put out six um, priorities. And the first, of course, is the European Green Deal, but also a Europe fit for digital age and an economy that works for people. Especially the second one is very relevant in this context. Now in 21, two new programs start, the Digital Europe program, which is more about deployment and uh, Horizon Europe. Here in um, Pillar 2, um, Cluster 4, and especially uh, destination one and two. Um, this is about um, digital space and industry. Uh, there's a budget of more than 15 billion euros available um, during seven years. Um, about relevant calls, there was Z21 Resilience 0126, uh, which is now closed. Um, and this is under evaluation. But soon there will be the 22 data 0104. I think this call is very much relevant for this community and there are 52 million euros budget available. So this, this call should open in a couple of weeks and the evaluation uh, will be done by Hadia. So recommendations. Well, this slide is um, not an official commission um, 
opinion, it's more me as a PO having a couple of related projects. As I see it, there's a, a couple of marketplace tools, which uh, sometimes I use myself, Amazon, eBay, Facebook, Uber, Booking.com. Um, so what is a marketplace? A marketplace is where you can sell something and buy something and uh, make business and so on. Most of these tools are from America. Some like Booking.com or ResearchGate um, are not from, from US. And yeah, you can buy products or buy accommodation or like um, LinkedIn and ResearchGate are more about uh, networking and exchange of uh, research data. Tinder is about dating. And if I look at these tools, for me, they're very easy to navigate and they seem to have a clear logic. logic and I don't want to say it, but maybe they have a good ontology behind. Then I was recently also reading this book, AI Superpowers from Kay Fu Lee. And for him, there are seven um, AI superpowers, Google, Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft, all the US. And, and there's Baidu, Alibaba, and Tencent from China. And very interesting, this book, the EU is not really even mentioned. So now if you have new projects, um, funded by the commission. Um, me as PO, what are the expectations? So first of all, the new system should actually really run. Um, second, uh, usability aspects should be addressed. And I think, uh, third, um, it should be competitive on the market to some degree. So now I come to the last part of my presentation. Um, well, currently I have 16 projects and half of them have some kind of marketplaces. Some have it as as, um, as a main aim of the project, but some do other research or some other innovation and also develop a, a marketplace. So this, these three projects here were the first kind of um, first projects that I got. I was, was not really a success story uh, and the platform is even not online anymore. Phoenix and Manus Square, um, they have finished recently. They were quite interesting. Um, they also had dedicated deliverables on ontologies um, about the market uh, exploitation. This is not yet so clear if they will really have a longer life. But um, yeah, in this context, um, yeah, they, these are really uh, marketplaces. Then um, I got a, a next kind of generation of projects in DTFF05 uh, 2019. This is a FOF um, projects. Therefore, implicitly, these are about um, manufacturing. Um, this call is about makers, fab labs, and do it yourself. So uh, they are not specifically about um, new marketplaces, but they all develop some some. Some tool, some tool for the community. Some have um, matchmaking and, and so on, and some have, have very interesting partner. I think um, Wikipedia is also an open next, and so on. So uh, for these projects, they, they, they just passed the M18 uh, review. Um, I think there could be some interesting outcome in the end. So this is my last real slide. Um, these projects here should talk later. I'm not sure. Welt Galaxy is maybe not coming. But uh, Welt Galaxy and Market for Zero, these are two sister projects from called DT and MVP 20 2018. Um, they will finish um, early next year. Um, they were from a call um, specifically for um, digital plug and produce. So they should really make a, a new um, industrial marketplaces. Um, these both projects are very complex because they have um, lump sums, which sh shall become very much more um, uh, sh shall be used very much more in Horizon Europe. And they, one third of their funding will be um, will be distributed via um, sub grants. Here I, in this slide, I put the link of the alpha version from Welt Galaxy and Market for Zero will launch their, their marketplace soon. It's the um, Smart Manufacturing Week. I'm sure Market for Zero can much better explain 
what they are doing and also the um, relevance to, to onto comments and ontologies. And then the last project here, Dome for Zero, this is actually the sister project of onto comments. They, they started roughly the same time. They are from calls DTN MVP 39 and 40. Um, onto comments runs during three years and Dome one year more. And the idea is that onto comments shall deliver input for Dome. What is also in common, um, I am PO of all these four projects and I have to say they're all very interesting. And with this, I my last slide. And um, yeah, thanks again for organizing this workshop. And maybe you have questions to me. Thank you, Laszlo, uh, for this uh, interesting presentation. And thank you also for your time. Very good that we are on the schedule. So are there any questions or comments? So I have one uh, comment uh, or question uh, is that, so we saw in your slides that some of the marketplaces uh, uh, project, related project uh, are not even uh, active today and uh, they are finished. Uh, are there any recommendations or uh, like reports from these marketplaces available to the community that they can use these recommendations? Uh, good question. Um, so I go back to the slide. Um, well, let's say Phoenix and Marcus uh, Manus Square, they, they um, finished recently. Of course, all these projects have some um, public deliverables, some project more, some less. And then for IBAS, which was really not a success, recommendations, well, uh, what can you say? If you have a project which is not so successful, uh, quite often they get silent and then <laughs> It depends also on their business model. So they said to me, yeah, okay, we tried something and it didn't work out. Okay. So recommendation, I, I'm not so sure if they will have recommendations, but the ones still running and finishing soon, so let's say Welt Galaxy and Market for Zero, I think this one you could um, contact now and, and, and get much better online um, input. Also, they are struggling also with Corona and and so on. It's not easy. They cannot meet in in, in real. But um, yeah, these are the next kind of success stories. Yeah, thank you. And uh, Lauro uh, Reynolds also asked uh, when when does the digital marketplace uh, call open and where will the link uh, be published? Um, is this is the one? Um, which I mentioned in my presentation. This one? Well, I don't know if you talk about 22 data or 104, but maybe just put it in Google and you will see it. You, you will find it. It's in the working in the work program already. But I have to add this is a call from DG Connect and I am not directly involved. I just make I was just search, searching myself for ontology in the work program and then found these two calls and I thought, well, these are maybe the most relevant for this community. But they should open on, on 23rd uh, November. So if there isn't any question, I also have another related question. So are there any information about uh, these related uh, marketplaces that you referred that they use ontology or not? You mean if there's a place where they collect this uh, information? No, no, uh, for these uh, related marketplaces, marketplaces project, are they using ontology? So for most of them we know but for right. like i was phoenix and others right. phoenix and manu square they reported on ontologies they have a little um talking about it and um belt galaxy and market for zero they they they, they, they look into this huh? they, i'm not so sure they, they have public deliverable and yeah dome is the sister of um auto comments so they should have a lot of uh, information yeah, exactly. So, and we will uh, hear about that in more details today. So, thank you, Laszlo. So, with that, I think we can uh, go on with marketplaces uh, introduction. Uh, 
uh, with uh, other marketplaces experiences like Marketplace, Wimp, and Market 4.0. For Marketplace, Daniela uh, Toti, and for uh, Wimp, Christina, and for Market 4.0, uh, Cosmos will present. So I will shortly introduce uh, them. Uh, and first, we will start with Daniela, and uh, he can like present this slide and share that with us. So Daniela holds a PhD in computer science and engineering and uh, is active both in the business and the academic world. He was an IT consultant for uh, Altran Italia from 2008 to 2010, uh, designing and developing uh, Java uh, enterprise applications, services, and CMS uh, at the Italian National uh, Broadcasting Company. RAI, uh, where he was uh, assigned to uh, technical leadership for uh, uh, several IT projects. In 2012, he got his PhD from uh, Roma Tra University, working at the database uh, research group, where his key areas of research uh, range from uh, model and data management to uh, inform uh, mention extraction methodology like neural language processing, machine learning, and semantic knowledge discovery for uh, intelligent system. Uh, so, Daniela, uh, now the stage is yours. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me correctly? Yes. Okay, perfect. So, thank you, Ibrahim, for the nice introduction. Uh, well, today, I'm going to share with you very briefly, uh, since uh, we have a um, uh, a short amount of time to do that. Uh, a couple of experiences uh, in terms of ontology development uh, within the context of one of the EMC derived projects for materials modeling. Um, I'm talking about uh, the Marketplace project. Uh, this is a an Horizon 2020 project whose ultimate purpose is uh, to bring about a unified open online marketplace uh, for materials modeling and related collaboration activities. Uh, such a marketplace is meant as a sort of one-stop shop for enabling and accelerating materials modeling in the industry. So basically, it is meant to leverage uh, recent developments in terms of software engineering and the ICT community uh, in order to collect, adapt, and integrate all the scattered modeling components from all the fragmented uh, materials modeling and industrial communities, and hopefully uh, provide uh, a single point of access uh, in terms of an online gateway online platform to all materials modeling activities in, in Europe. Uh, so this is done via a web platform um, that enables experts and knowledge providers in general to uh, register in it and users to browse and look for them according to a number of parameters, including the expertise required. Uh, within this context, the male ontology uh, serves as the underlying mechanism to model experts, knowledge providers, and expertise, and enable the related functionalities of uh, the web application in terms of acquiring information, storing information, searching for certain information. This is uh, not a standalone ontology, but it is part of Emo's ecosystem and specifically is, um, is placed at the application level of Emo's ecosystem and uh, as um, an alignment um, with Emo at, at the granularity level, it is sufficient for mouse purposes. And also, um, it has some connections with external ontologies, including, for instance, the friend of a friend ontology, the fourth ontology. Uh, on the other end, uh, Promo uh, was mastermind is Professor Prizig. Uh, um, is um, instead an ontology-based mathematical simulation environment which produces standalone simulations of workflows, providing information to resolve the interoperability issues uh, among different programs. So, so basically, uh, users can enter variables and equations, and Promo creates the corresponding mathematical models of the building blocks representing process models as directed graphs uh, that show the process, that basically depict the processes as topologies with all the mathematical information mapped in an ontological form uh, that is an extension of Emo. 
so the graph is then directly turned into directly uh, translated to a, a workflow uh, that can be then executed by a given orchestrator uh, where blocks can be replaced by specific solvers, of course, uh, um, after corresponding wrappers are developed for them. So basically turning um, uh, something like this, so uh, a process topology for uh, a process like the melting process that we have here into uh, the workflow that we see here, where basically the building blocks are replaced by an external solver that is, that is used as, um, as a black box. Um, there are a number of uh, challenges that we are still trying to tackle or that still need to be addressed. Uh, the most relevant to which I think is the alignment and integration with other marketplace and external domain and application ontologies, and the still in progress development of Emmo that is, however, uh, about to reach uh, a stable release in the coming months. Uh, there's also the fact that we are still, but I think this is something that is unavoidable. Uh, we're still we still need to rely on external data sources for instance data for experiment data and so forth and also um, another issue is the actual uh, usage of the defined ontologies within a triple store which is not a challenge per se since basically all the defined ontologies so far uh, are triple store ready and have been preliminarily and um, tested and deployed uh, within a triple store successfully so they just they just need to be used Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Daniela. So uh, we will go to the next marketplace. Uh, Sylvia will present the WIMP marketplace. So Sylvia is a computational uh, scientist in the scientific computing department at SDFC. Uh, she holds a doctorate in theoretical physics from University of Turin and occupied postdoctoral and uh, uh, teaching experience from position at IPN, Lyon and University of Coimbra. Uh, in the last years, she has been working on the WIMP, uh, Virtual Materials Marketplace projects, in particular to co-develop ontologies that will serve as a semantic basis for the interoperability of internal and external components of the marketplace. Currently, she is also actively involved in the Ontocommons and DOM 4.0 project. Sylvia, the stage is yours. Thanks a lot, Ibrahim. I hope you can hear me well and see my slides. Yes. If not, please let me know. So, hello, everybody. I'm Sylvia Chiacchiera from CFC UKRI, and I will present here the experience within the Vim project. And uh, at uh, CFC, my colleagues and I, we are, we have been, and we are responsible for ontologies, interoperability, and standardization within this project. So let me see if I can switch. Uh, as, uh, I mean, thanks to Daniele, who just introduced our sibling project, so the virtual material marketplace is a sibling project of the marketplace project. And we are also developing a similar digital marketplace where the idea is to facilitate exchanges between providers and users in the area of materials modeling. So I will follow through the presentation a specific example, which is imagine as a typical provider, a software owner, and a typical good would be a materials modeling uh, software tool. And a typical user would be, for example, an industry researcher. So the platform in between is open and it relies on semantic standards. Uh, namely, what we did was we developed a system of ontologies. And uh, you can see in this uh, graphical summary, you can see each bubble represents an ontology. So here on the left, you see two, these two columns, a set of eight ontologies, which cover different aspects of the marketplace. And then here you have middle level modules in particular to align to the MMO. And later in a separate presentation, I will talk more about the EVMPO, which was a joint effort together with the MMC CSA and the Marketplace project. So just to give you an idea, for example, the OTRAS is the ontology for training services and it covers training and topics. And then we have the VIMP software ontology VISO, which covers software and so on and so forth. Now, how do we use these ontologies? 
uh, they are the basis, the semantic basis of the platform. And in this sense, they guide data ingest and storage, and then later the searching and browsing. So here is an example uh, of the ingest. So these are snapshots taken from the graphical user interface of the backend. And it's an example in which we try to create a record for a software uh, on our backend. Uh, this is run by our partner, Hostus, and is based on the Zontal Space product. So here you see uh, the, all the fields that appear, so as main name, version identifier, and so on, uh, are connected to the Vim ontologies. And similarly are the drop-down menus. Here I just uh, show two examples. So here, for example, you have the physics e equations that uh, the software solves. And here you have uh, the licenses under which the software is released. So all these are either properties or um, individuals within the ontologies. Here I summarize some lessons learned and suggestions around the usage of semantics. Uh, so about interoperability. So semantics is for sure an important part of the solution, but it's not the whole story. So we should keep in mind that syntax does matter too, and the two can be entangled. What I mean is that uh, concrete and technical implementations can carry some constraints. So it's, need, it's good to be aware of this. Uh, the human factor. So this is maybe trivial, but it also good to keep in mind. So if interfaces are meant for humans too, they need to be human friendly. With this, I mean, we shouldn't have a drop-down menu with 3,000 terms, for example. And the annotation, who will do the annotation? So keep in mind it is error prone, and the human automatically will carry some errors, and it's time consuming. So it is good to have some tools to support it. And when it comes to challenges and difficulties here, we identified some. So one is to use new technologies without missing out on previous approaches and the, the many tools that are available from them. Another challenge is to find the right balance between expressivity and usability. And similarly, a relative point is to identify a suitable level of detail for descriptions. And finally, uh, we should say that it's, it's very hard or almost impossible to combine a con reaching a consensus within a wider community and field and the development time constraints we have, because one has to make many choices when developing ontologies. And finally, a suggestion, it's important to share and document whatever you develop. And with this, I thank my, oh, sorry, <laughs> I give you some references first. So here you have the development uh, is happening on gitlab.com. So it's public and ontologies are available under LGPL version three. Releases are also on mapportal.org. And here you have some literature references. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Silvia, for presenting in ontology. Uh, Vimp marketplace, sorry, uh, Vimp marketplace experiences. Now we will move to uh, Market 4.0. Uh, so uh, Cosmos Alexopoulos will present that. Uh, he graduated from Computer Engineering and Informatics Department of University of Patras, Greece, in September 1999. He has received a master's degree in information technology at 2001 and PhD in engineering at 2006 from the University of Patras in Greece. The topic of flexibility measurement in production systems. So, Cosmos, now the floor is Thank you. Thank you, Ibrahim. Uh, uh, thank you for inviting us in this uh, meeting, in this event. So the, the, the content of this presentation is to, to present a project market uh, uh, 4.0 already introduced from, uh, from Laszlo in his uh, presentation. So we will go through uh, the project, what the project is doing, and then we will see the connection uh, between the, the project market 4.0 and the Onto Commons and how Market 4.0 is related and linked to, to the topic of ontology. So, uh, Market 4.0 is a project that we started in 2018. Now it has more or less something like five to six months to, to its completion. And so we are, we are uh, close to, to the end of the, of the project. And there are 
19 partners and the coordinator is uh, Indrasoft. So the objective of the project is to develop uh, an open uh, multi-sided uh, digital platform for uh, enabling transactions and uh, creating a marketplace for production equipment and services mainly in the manufacturing world, in the manufacturing domain. And we want to achieve it uh, by creating trust in, in, the, in the interactions among the, the stakeholders that are there in the marketplace by providing the, the necessary technologies. Uh, for that, we offer uh, a set of enablers, a set of, uh, of tools. So we offer a web portal, an e-commerce web portal, which you will see later on a few, a few uh, screenshots about that. Uh, we offer uh, industrial data space or international data space that is, it is called now technology, a framework for uh, data exchange. We offer an API for uh, connecting uh, to our market pl uh, platform to connect applications to connect data to our uh, to our market 4.0 platform. Uh, we offer a number of applications, specific applications to to facilitate the collaboration. So there are applications for uh, for uh, uh, ordering some 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 equipment, for evaluating some equipment. Uh, for uh, comparing uh, offerings from different suppliers, for doing matchmaking, there are several applications that are connected and linked into this uh, yeah, e-commerce uh, uh, web portal. And of course, we offer support, we offer support for onboarding the, uh, new organizations. Uh, we had also this experience from the open calls that we had uh, with uh, the small projects that joined our, our uh, platform. Uh, and similarly, in the same manner, integration of new apps uh, to the Market for the Zero platform, so new new providers can provide additional applications to the platform. You can see in the next slide the main stakeholders that we have in, in our platform. It's it's the the, the demand side, typically some uh, manufacturing company or some uh, sub, or some uh, uh, part of uh, product supplier, PRM supplier, system integrator. Uh, looking for equipment or services. And then on the other side, we have the supply side. It, it's uh, production equipment suppliers uh, or uh, manufacturing on demand suppliers or what we call contract manufacturing and engineering services uh, suppliers. And then we also have the infrastructure and our provider that uh, provide the tools and the solution to facilitate this interaction. And of course, in the middle, we have the platform to, 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 to facilitate the interaction of all these uh, stakeholders. Uh, as also mentioned, uh, the, we already have the portal. We have the platform uh, is uh, is uh, is up and running, um, and we have used it both for internal purposes and also for um, for uh, facilitating the needs of the, the open call. However, the, the let's say the official launch of the platform uh, will be done in a couple of weeks in one of. Uh, of uh, events, uh, it's called Smart uh, Manufacturing Week event, uh, and in there we will officially launch the platform and we invite uh, uh, organizations, companies outside our network to, to join uh, uh, the, the platform. Here you can see some slides and uh, with the equipment already available in, uh, in, this, uh, in this marketplace. Now, when it comes to, to the ontology issue and uh, the, the relation to the auto commons project, uh, in, in market 4.0, we, of course, we are using several uh, models, data models for describing uh, entities that we have in the marketplace, such as machines, uh, supplier attributes, uh, services offerings, etc. Uh, so there are models in the, in the uh, line in, the, in different uh, 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 edges of this of this marketplace and different stakeholders. We have the, 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 the data model of the IDS system itself. And we think that this uh, this model, these models that are there for the different uh, domains, as we call them, uh, could be very valuable uh, input for developing uh, ontology uh, or, or for developing ontology models uh to be used in the, in the market in the marketplace 
Uh, now, uh, when it comes to auto commons, uh, we, the, the aim is to use the auto commons ontology as a, a neutral uh, format to enable the interoperability with other marketplaces. Uh, and for that, we expect to enlarge our potential uh, customer base uh, to, to provide more products and, of course, to have more, more exploitation opportunities. This is better explained in the next slide, in which we have the, the marketplace user of the Market.0 platform. And then through the Auto Commons uh, ontology, uh, we want to extend the, the connections to, to additional uh, uh, market marketplaces. And I think this is one of the objectives within the DOM 4.0 uh, project that uh, Market 4.0 is also uh, uh, specific um, element yeah this is what uh, we would like we had in, in mind to, to share with you in this uh, workshop uh, if you have any questions please uh, yeah, uh, feel free to, to ask me thank you thank you cosmos so are there any questions comments If not, we can go to our next speaker. So, Bjorn uh, Tore Lofar from Synthet will present DOM 4.0 uh, requirements. So, while I am introducing Bjorn, he can uh, share his uh, slides. Uh, Bjorn is a researcher at uh, Synthet uh, Trondheim in Norway, and he is originally a chemical engineer but have spent uh, the last 15 years working with data-centric uh, architecture and interoperability, most notably in projects such as Marketplace Project and Antitrans Project, and more currently in DOM 4.0, which he represent here today in the role as a, a technology manager. Bayon, the floor is yours. Thank you, Ibrahim, for the nice introduction. So, uh, the as Laszlo said, my title was, was given as DOME 4.0 requirements. So I won't bore you with all the requirements of DOME 4.0. I'm more focused on the how we can use ontologies uh, in the platform, since this is an ontology workshop. <clears throat> so first, I'll spend some time to explain what we are trying to achieve with uh, the DOME project, mainly focusing on the challenges that we face. And next, I'll look a bit into details where we think ontologies might be a great tool to help us achieve the ecosystem that we're trying to build. And this leads us <coughs> to look at what is required. And before the end, I'll give you a, a small peek into what ontologies we are looking at. So Digital Open Marketplace Ecosystem 4.0, that's the full name of DOM 4.0. Yeah, it wants to be an ecosystem for transactions between data providers and data consumers and also data services. We do not aim to be yet another marketplace, but more a marketplace of marketplaces, where we connect to other marketplaces, open simulation platforms, open translation environments, databases, knowledge bases, and so forth. And which, where we try to be unique is with our uh, semantically enriched core. And this is where the use of ontology will be key. So I'll say something more about this later. When we will demonstrate the added value via altogether nine business to business showcases. And in the in the core is of course of course the fair principles, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. To summarize, we we want to become a trusted digital ecosystem that is first choice for businesses seeking to transact with data and data services. So this is the list of the, the business to business showcases. I don't, don't want to go into the details. I just want to show you the, the vast um, span in the different data sources that we need to, uh, to address from environmental and weather data through, through uh, materials data to manufacturing and chemical processes. And also we have, as 
previous speaker said, we, we try to connect to market 4.0. And then over to the problem space. So in today's digital world, we have an abundance of data from sensors, Internet of Things, services, and, and so on. But the data that resides to a large degree in data lakes, data warehouses, or, or even behind company firewalls. The challenge is that each data source has its own way to access the data. This, together with a lack of interoperability or even metadata accompanying the data, we get information silos that are difficult to penetrate. And with emerging market prices, as we saw earlier here, uh, the other market, and also we have other market places that do not mention. Uh, data is becoming ever more important. But the challenges and the requirements from the these days of data consumers is to a large degree shared. So the marketplace marketplaces typically have to to access data from multiple sources to satisfy their customers' need. And when you have several marketplaces accessing the same data, uh, the work to adopt to these different data sources will be duplicated. Uh, and then other, challenge, other challenges relate to trust. Can we trust that the data we have found is of good quality? Uh, and what is the provenance of the data? And from a data provider point of view, the challenge is to keep track of the intellectual property of, of the data because once it's out there, it's hard to control where the data goes next. So there is a lack of, of digital collaborative ecosystem that connects all the marketplaces, databases, and so forth, and treats the market participants as equal citizens. So an analogy for this is the, is the electrical sockets that you can see in the bottom left corner. Uh, there's a lack of standards in the world. So if, you, if you're going to go traveling, you have to to bring your, your universal connector to connect to the local socket. And we, we, we try to become the universal connector for, for data. So as already mentioned, there are many different platforms out there. On this slide, I, I list some of them, most, most from the European materials modeling community. Uh, we do not want to compete with them. We, we rather want to help them consolidate into knowledge assets and bring more value to them and to us by bringing them closer together. We can, of course, not do this alone. And we are relying on collaborating with all relevant initiatives. And we do. Uh, so, and to uh, avert the semantic pitfalls, we want to adopt the ontology based data structures established in the Open Simulation Platform project. And we want to achieve. A, scalability through connectivity and cross-domain interoperability. At the same time, we focus on security and data provenance to retrain the trust between the involved parties. As already mentioned, interoperability is key to achieve all this. And at the end, we, we do try to adopt the FAIR principles. So, I'll try to summarize uh, into what I call ontological requirements for the Dolan 4.0 ecosystem. So at a high level, we need a semantic data exchange ontology. And this will be used to enable data exchange between data consumer and data provider across platforms. Uh, this will be a late, lightweight ontology based on or aligned with MO. Uh, the ecosystem information model will be the basis for all ecosystem communication both between internal services, but also when connecting to other platforms. Also, I'll give some more details about this later. For the actual data exchange, we need a data structure that is capable of ontological mapping. And as I mentioned earlier, we will base this on the ontology-based data structures from the open simulation platforms. And the data structures will then enable a high level of semantic interoperability. And in addition, DOM will have a set of services that will use these ontologies to enable the users to do semantic searches for data, do secure transactions while keeping the track of the provenance and the sovereignty of the data. And finally, we, we have an onboarding service to, to help the users uh, get onto the platform with their data. So we're com coming back to the data exchange ontology, what we want to achieve is to enable users of every platform connected with DOME to be able to search and find information, and at the same time be able to exchange information and use it. And users can be 
persons, can also be entities or other platforms. And mo most importantly, Dome 4.0 do not have to harvest all the information from all the connected platforms. We can relay the searches and help interpret the results on the fly as they come back. So we do not intend to uh, ontologize all the, all the data records from all the sources. We just we what we need is a minimal set of metadata based on the data exchange ontology. So coming back to the ecosystem information model, the aim is to develop an information model or ontology to describe all the elements of an ecosystem or marketplaces. And this is needed to cover all aspects of the ecosystem, such as data data platforms, connectors, which we could use to connect used to establish the connection between the data provider and the data consumer, but also data sets, tools, services, and so forth. So th this, was, this work is ongoing, and we are still gathering information to assess what is available by others, both project partners, but also external sources, and what we need to develop ourselves. The focus is on information models and ontologies, but also on relevant digital marketplaces, initiatives, and similar. And once you have gathered all relevant information, we need to evaluate how to how to proceed. And things to consider for is, for instance, maturity in the widespread usage, consistency, but also possibility for community alignment with, for instance, MO and onto Commons. We are currently in the process of writing examples based on the nine showcases. The next phase will be to evaluate and, and develop and or align the existing models to suit our needs. So the table there is shows an extract of the table we're working on to assess the different information models and ontologies we find relevant. For instance, the international data space, spaces information model is interesting to us as this also covers a network of connected trusted data sources. And the BIMP ontology represents one of the marketplaces we would like to be able to connect to the Dome 4.0 ecosystem was the DCAT data catalog vocabulary is very much relevant for us as this is a standard for data catalogs. So this, this table is much longer, but uh, I cannot present it all here. So to summarize, we have a short introduction into Dome 4.0 digital marketplace ecosystem. Try to outline some of the challenges with dealing with different data sources today and how Dome 4.0 will try to tackle these and to do so, we will rely on ontologies, but also on community support in order to connect all different marketplaces, databases, knowledge bases, open simulation platforms, and so forth. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Bjorn, for this nice presentation. Are there any comments or questions? So I can see Gerard raised his hand. Yeah, I, uh, um, easier to ask like this. Uh, okay. uh, it strikes me that, you know, um, Obviously, you know, as, as some of you know, I'm also involved in, in some of these projects and, and it's interesting to, to listen from the outside. And, you know, we, we have these two large kind of ontology uses but on a very broad scale, which is internal and external, right? So kind of making the marketplaces work efficiently as marketplaces and like the, some of the resources like DCAT and so on come also into that. And the other is if all of the uh, you know, data about things that we want to trade, you know, like about software, about, you know, other types of resources, were organized according to a common ontology, you know, obviously it makes makes it much easier for the marketplaces then just to, to sort of um, work with these resources. So there's sort of these two very broad kind of case, um, you know, uses of ontology. And uh, I'm not sure whether you, what your view is on, you know, where the biggest the biggest need is and the focus. I mean, obviously we want to have both, but um, 
you know, where are the biggest challenges and opportunities in terms of external versus internal focus of the application and development of the ontologies? I think uh, as long as long uh, as soon as you start talking to others, if if that's internal or external, you you would need to know what you're actually talking about, and that's where ontologies becomes important. Because if you can if you can, can connect this to an ontology, then it's clear that this is exactly what you're asking for. If it's through an API to an external marketplace or it's an API internal, I don't think that it does oh. not necessarily make a difference. If you do it internally. You can do some shortcuts, but if you want to communicate externally, there is. Uh, if you start doing shortcuts, then you, you will end up doing a lot of shortcuts. I think. Yeah, I mean it's not necessarily shortcuts. I mean maybe Sylvia can, can also comment on that. I mean, for example, in in the Vim project, you know, uh, there has been developing ontologies that are okay. They they are putting the the way in which it, you know resources are used uh, from in, external into this framework um, so that they can be more more easily queried in that and so on and um, um, but uh, but uh, in, in the end you know since no domain uh, large domain ontologies exist you you have to develop your own type of thing to make that happen um, and you can't you know you can't kind of wait to develop a marketplace until the whole community has agreed on how you describe software in materials modeling, right? I mean, this is just not realistic. Um, yeah. So there is, I think there is that tension between making it work on a kind of internal basis versus, you know, the, the larger community effort. Yeah, and that's, that's one of the challenges of, of DOM. Yeah, we're a sister project of Onto Commons, but we sort of need the uh, the outcome of onto commons on the onto commons project from day one and of course it's yeah. we're uh, th three years in parallel that's not possible so we have to we have to do our own of course uh we are lucky to have uh some of the partners are in both projects so we they, they can sort of do the do the job with both hats that helps but but still we have we have to do uh, do some some things uh, internally in the project so. First, that's Sylvia is one of the ones yeah, responsible, so she can, she can afford Maybe, that. Yeah, yeah, we'll just briefly comment that from my point of view, I guess, uh, so to connect to the external world, uh, probably it's harder to keep consistency. So if you connect only within yourself, you can build a consistent model. But if you want to connect to what is outside, yeah, it's probably yeah, more difficult to, to build a consistent Frankenstein, yeah, exactly. if you want. <laughs> yeah, that is exactly what I would try to say, but you said it much better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the discussion. And Ami Ibadu also asked uh, Is DOM 4.0 an open repository? Uh, in, in what sense? Uh... Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe he meant that maybe is it available in like So we're, we're in month, month, month 10 of a 48 month project. So we're, there is nothing publicly available as of now, but uh, of course we, we will be open to the, to the public. Anyone can uh, log, log in or connect. That's uh, whether the, the platform itself will be, uh, open source, I don't remember what we promised there, but, but it will, it will be open to, uh, to anyone that wants to participate, uh, from a platform point of view. Yes. It's the O, the O, the o stands for open. So it's the little open market, marketplace, uh, ecosystem. Yes. So thank you Bjorn for the presentation. Uh, now we can go to our uh, last presentation, Marketplace Interoperability Demonstrator by Sylvia. So Sylvia, the stage is yours. So you are muted. Yeah, thank you. I was trying to share my presentation. Okay, I think, I hope you see everything right. 
So hello everybody. So um, apologies for those who were here before because I will repeat for the sake of completeness, I will repeat some things for the others who were not here before. So I'm um, I'm Sylvia Kakira from UKRI. And in this talk, we talk about an onto commons demonstrator that deals with interoperability between marketplaces and similar initiatives. This work is a collaboration between UKRI, so it's myself, Martin Horsch, Michael Tito, and Ilian Todorov, and GCL, Gerhard Goldbeck, who is here. And let me, and I mean, it builds on previous efforts. I mean, this is, uh, we should remember that uh, onto commons is a coordination and support action. And it builds on previous efforts, and it's a community community building uh, kind of action. So let me. Okay, for those who don't know us, uh, just a brief introduction about our institutions. So the UK Research and Innovation is a, a public agency in the United Kingdom, and among others, it brings together seven research disciplinary research councils, and one of those is the Science and Technology Facilities one. What we do is to, we are active in research in different areas of physics and chemistry, and we operate the research facilities for all the areas of UKRI. Goldberg Consulting is a company based in Cambridge, and uh, it aims to bridge existing gaps in the materials modeling ecosystem, uh, connecting communities, and bringing technology from academia to industry. And in general, they uh, research the ways and the barriers towards economic impact. And Gerard is also very active in the MMC ABSL. He's currently the executive secretary. So he's really very active in community building initiatives. Now, uh, this demonstrator uh, is called EVMF, that stands for European Virtual Marketplace Framework. So the idea is to propose an interoperability framework for platforms and services from the NMVP line of projects. For those who don't know, the, the acronym is uh, expanded here at the bottom. And uh, it builds, as I said, on previous, on previous and ongoing efforts, such as the VIMP ontology DVMPO. And here you find a scheme similar to what uh, Bjorn just showed before, uh, summarizing the kind of initiatives we have in mind. So at the center, you have coordination and support offered by the MMC and the Onto Commons activities, the material modeling marketplaces, VIMP and the marketplace. And you have in this ecosystem, if you want, other actors such as the more recent uh, DOM 4.0 data marketplace, translation environment, simulation platforms, and so on and so forth. And the purpose of ontology application in this uh, Onto Commons demonstrator is mainly interoperability and data sharing. So here I recall briefly uh, what the VIMP ontologies are. So it's a system of ontologies aligned with the MMO. And they provide a framework to organize the knowledge we need on, on a, such a marketplace. And here you find, uh, uh, so they, I mean, they are publicly available. And here you find links to the repository and for the documentation, literature citations, and so on. So uh, the VIMP ontologies, the marketplace level ontologies, as we call them, it's they are eight here on the left. And they address concepts such as uh, uh, agents and communication, for example, in the VIM communication ontology uh, or software in the VIS ontology. In this graph, each bubble represents an ontology and the arrows from one to the other mean that one ontology uses concept from the other. In particular, this set and system of ontologies is aligned with the MMO and there is a middle level um, module, which is called EVMPO, and I'm going to talk a bit more about this. So the VMPO stands for European Virtual Marketplace Ontology. It was a joint effort uh, between VIMP, the MMC CSA, and the Marketplace Project. And the idea was to uh, come up with a set of fundamental categories that are needed in such a marketplace. So here in the graph, I hope you can see it well. Uh, here each bubble represents a concept in blue in the VMPO, whereas in green, uh, the green rectangles are concepts from the MMO. And the red arrows, our connections we draw. In this case, an arrow uh, means subclass of. So in these 11 paradigmatic categories, you can identify some easily recognizable ones, such as calendar event, infrastructure, uh, material, model, and so on. So uh, the idea behind this work was already 
and interoperability between uh, marketplaces. So now, within this Onto Commons demonstrator, if we focus on the proposed framework itself, what are the benefits we expect? So since we have a concrete implementation that is going on within VIMP, and we have, thanks to Onto Commons also, interactions with similar initiatives and the wider community, we help to discuss, extend, and improve this proposed framework. And we help to foster the prospective use of this framework by other initiatives. And also on the other side, we can provide onto commons with the prototypical needs from such digital marketplaces and similar platforms. And finally, this is an opportunity to discuss uh, the proposed alignment to the MMO for domain ontologies. Uh, I should mention the MMO has recently changed name, but you can find here the repository and all the information. So if we now consider a typical scenario uh, for this demonstrator, a typical scenario will be we have two platforms, A and B, that use different conceptual models. And this is probably the most common scenario. So we'll have platform A, where the records are of type A1, A2, N3, and platform B, similarly B1, B2, and B3. So consider that these A1, A2, N3 are classes, if we have an ontology in the background. And then for each record, a record of an AI will have certain fields or properties, and so on and so forth. So keep in mind these two levels of uh, organization of the knowledge. Now, the work of Onto Commons on top-level ontologies and middle-level ontologies can help us support federated queries on the high-level categories. Uh, so for example, in, in this specific example, it means we would understand what is the relation in terms of parent classes between this uh, A1, A2, N3, and this uh, Bs. In concrete, we could look between different uh, platforms for terms at the level of agent or infrastructure at this level. On the other side, if we look into alignment and mappings between domain ontologies, which would mean uh, to look into the properties within these fields, I mean, at this level, we could support federated ingest. So for example, a typical application would be a user could create a profile simultaneously on multiple platforms. So you see these two, there are two levels of approach here. Now, of course, here we are just focusing on the conceptual aspects, but in practice, we should also, uh, I mean, it would also matter to know who has access to the data and what information is actually stored and in which format. And so, I mean, also business and technical aspects would matter to make this really function. A concrete example we have identified, and thanks to Daniele who presented it before actually, uh, is that we found the case where we have separate ontologies uh, available. And namely, is uh, the description of agent experts and expertise. So we have the MIA ontology from the marketplace side. And this topic is also covered from the VIMP ontologies. So in this, this is a concrete example where we could uh, use could use onto commons approach. Uh, but we should know in this case, since both you see MMOs at top level, even if in a different way, this I mean, should simplify the task. Here you have a reference to the my ontology. Otherwise, in general, uh, if you would like to contribute, what we are looking for are ontologies or semantic assets that first are used within an MVP or similar initiatives, second, that are publicly available and documented, and third, that include in their scope some topics of broad relevance, such as materials modeling software, agents and expertise, or material modeling use case descriptions. Because the idea is to, uh, to work on topics that then can be more widely reused. So of course, I mean, this project, Onto Commons project focuses on ontologies. However, if uh, your backend does not use uh, semantic technologies as such, but you have a data model that satisfies this criteria and you would like to discuss with us, please don't hesitate to contact us. Because of, I mean, I'm aware that different marketplaces uh, use uh, semantic technologies at a different extent. And finally, just, a note on levels of description. So, I mean, we, we all agree that reality is complex. However, different levels of description can be of value and fit different purposes. So here are, is, are some pictures from uh, the Dasbury laboratory. So you have a simplified view, realistic view, and maybe the bigger picture can be surprising. So thank you for your attention.
and I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you, Silvia, for this nice presentation. Are there any questions or comments? So I can't see any uh, questions, so we can move to the uh, discussion part of our session. Oh, I can see one question uh, from Amaya, uh, and he said that how easy is to interpret between different marketplaces? So at the moment, I mean, there is no, at least from my side, as far as I'm aware, there is no concrete, uh, there has been no concrete in inter I mean, uh, interoperation yet. Mm -hmm. But, um, okay, I should also say that, uh, for example, no, the marketplace is not all are already open and active. So, yeah. So I would say it's, it's not trivial, <laughs> it's not trivial. Yes, but I, I think it's important to keep in mind that there are many aspects like uh, yeah, getting access to to the data. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yes, developing uh, so for achieving interoperability. Uh, so most of the also speakers maybe referred that it should be. Uh, a, a common ontology for having this interoperability and like developing a global ontology framework for the uh, marketplaces. So this maybe will uh, lead us to the discussion uh, that uh, can or can there be a global marketplace so it's knowledge graph and yes. Sorry, I see. I see also a question from Emaya about will it be in the future? So ho hopefully yes. But uh, yeah, also thanks to the, what Dom is doing. So does anyone know uh, and want to discuss uh, this question about like, can there be a global marketplace knowledge graph uh, for marketplaces? Well, I guess, I mean, I guess one, one of the important points is uh, sharing information, but it's, uh, I mean, one of the points we discuss in similar in, in similar also uh, workshops is where to share because there are, of course, I mean, everybody is reluctant to share something that is still work in progress. Mm -hmm. It's very understandable, but on the other side, if you share it too, so it's not easy to find the right moment to share information and the, the right place to share. One possibility is to do it via channels uh, such as the MNC. So. Mm -hmm. I guess that is one of the sharing information is one of the points. Yes. Or but, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But of course, I mean, also, uh, as we mentioned before, uh, when you increase the size of the community, then it's to agree on something. Also, the time it probably it takes to agree it gets longer. Um, so he wanted to match this with the time constraints to de to develop uh, to I mean to deliver a project. So there are these difficulties. One has to keep in mind that. 
but yeah, I would say that sharing uh, information and having a place to share information is mm -hmm. one of the necessary points. Yes. Um, the, based on the previous workshop also that we had uh, for marketplaces collaboration, so the added value of this global ontology framework uh, has been addressed and discussed, like to facilitate the interoperability uh, between hubs, including the models, workflow, data enabling, uh, information and knowledge sharing, and uh, like it could uh, helpful for facilitate reusability and also provide a common reference system to facilitate fairness. So, and it's so how can how can marketplace ontology be? So like global ontology framework for marketplaces look like? I know it's not easy to answer, but... I mean, I don't know, what, what comes to me, to my mind is that either we, I mean, I see two, two solutions, I mean, in general. Either we agree on uh, on a common model, which is one possibility, or we just share each one shares what they have, and we uh, build a mediator. So we um, build mappings between what is around. Yeah, there are these two approaches, but um, yeah, I don't see a third solution. Mm -hmm. But of course, we, we should remember it's not it's not obvious that. Uh, Every database uh, contains a triple store. It's not, it's not obvious. It's not necessary. So yeah, there are also technical challenges. I would say. Yeah. So is it possible to have one like common uh, use case that each of marketplace can use to present their workflow? and like collaborate between with each other with yeah so we, we we were even less ambitious so we were thinking of a small topic like that's why we we thought okay maybe material modeling software could be a topic or now agent identified this topic so a topic where uh, that is somehow the intersection between different marketplaces that could be Mm -hmm. That could be a way to go. And uh, yeah, because in this case, we could think of um, if ag agents and experts, I mean, they need to register on different marketplaces, that, that would be of value to the users in the sense they don't need to fill 10 forms to register to 10 platforms, let's say. I mean, mm -hmm. extrapolating ideally, they just fill one. So in, it's like we take the, the effort to simplify their lives somehow. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but I, I understand probably this, uh, the agents and expertise is not necessarily a common a point of intersection for all marketplaces. This was one we found that was described by ontologies. Mm -hmm. but. Yeah. So to discuss more uh, these topics, uh, do you think like having a common workspace, like, I don't know, like channels in, uh, like uh, Mattermost or a Slack, do you think these are helpful for uh, further collaboration of onto of marketplaces and onto commons? So I guess I would start with something uh, like uh, static, like I mean static in the sense simpler, like a shared document to collect uh, mm -hmm. links or publications or whatever people are happy to share. I think that too. Even uh, also project deliverables that are relevant, I think that would already. Yeah, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. Okay. But, uh, um, are there any other comments or questions from the audience or the speakers?
Uh, and also Gerard asked a question from audience. Do you know uh, of and um, could you post links to any semantic assets in material science? Uh, like vocabularies, dictionaries, taxonomies that marketplace and demonstrator could uh, utilize? So I was reading the other question, uh, wait, so I go in order because I was reading the other question on the Q&A uh, about annotation. Uh -huh, yes. So yeah, so my point there was that, um, so when we, we, we need to annotate uh, entries, so we could do it uh, manually, but it means uh, somebody has to go through through the fields and it's uh, time consuming. And when I said it's error prone, it's error prone in the sense if we tell a human to classify uh, to to choose between the drop down fields, we assume that the human will understand what we meant. So it's also possible that uh, there is some mismatch there in understanding. Is is not uh, like um, I mean I can give examples, but you see, I mean it's that could be. A, it could be not trivial that I mean, to match the understanding. And if we do it with tools, it can also be prone to errors. And um, so, I mean, that, that there is, uh, okay, but in any case, uh, we should think of, um, we could think of tools to, to do that because uh, that would, uh, I mean, encourage users to provide input. Uh, we had this discussion in some previous uh, events, and actually, I think it was a, a good point. Like, uh, if somebody, imagine, wants to send us a publication or whatever, if we have a tool that can extract the needed metadata without them doing the work again, that is an incentive. So I can say that uh, I saw in some scientific journals, they are going in the direction of enforcing annotation. So like, they call them checklists, so that the authors, when they submit the paper, now. It, I'm thinking about I think is not enforced yet, but there are there is one or two pages of um, boxes the authors have to tick to say what the paper is about. So this goes in the direction of precise annotation, and it's uh, somehow enforced by the publisher. But you see, this is, this is a way to go about it, uh, a different way to go about it. Sorry, the other point. It's not for me, so for the audience. But I don't want to monopolize the discussion. So this is the general discussion for, for everybody. So please. So thank you, Sylvia. And also thank you, uh, thank you others for participating and uh, discussion. Uh, so we'll, we are now at the end of the session and we can uh, close the session. Uh, Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You.